Okay, welcome back everybody to our second lecture on BC 308, Revelation and Daniel. We are now in Revelation chapter 11. Uh, we just um, looked at the two witnesses and uh, their ministry during the second half of the tribulation, the three and a half years, uh, and uh, what they will do and what will happen. So now let's pick up Revelation chapter 15 through verse 19. We we'll read about the seventh trumpet. Somebody could read that for us. Revelation 11, 15 through 19, please. Anyone could read? Revelation chapter 11, uh, let's read verse 15 to 19, please. Yeah. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there was a loud voice in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord, O Lord God Almighty, the, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. Your nations were angry and you, your wrath has come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and shall destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in, the he in, he in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple, and there was lightning, noises, thunderings, and an earthquake, and a great hail. Amen. Amen. So, this is the seventh trumpet. Now, just to reflect back on what the mighty angel said in chapter 10, saying that, uh, Revelation 10, 7, that in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, and he's about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished, and he, as he declared to his servants and prophets. So that means when the mighty angel said, "When the seventh trumpet, the seventh, this seventh trumpet is sounded by that angel in those days, God is going to wrap everything up. All the remaining prophecies are fulfilled, and it's over." So here, yeah, somewhere in the second half of the tribulation, after we cross that middle line, the seventh angel is sounding. And they're blowing the trumpet, and there is this declaration, this announcement that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. So there's a proclamation. This is what's going to happen. This is coming, right? That the Lord Jesus basically is, come, is going to come, and He's going to overpower all other kings and kingdoms and he's going to establish his kingdom here on earth. And from then on, it's going to be his rule, his dominion. So that's the announcement, the seventh trumpet. And we, we, we were told in the days of that announcement, everything will happen very quickly. And all the remaining prophecies that God has spoken will be fulfilled. And then John is seeing into heaven. This angel is sounding. And there is worship going on. And he is able to see the, you know, the very temple of God inside the temple of God, and he is able to see the Ark of the Covenant, and and there are great on the earth, there are great lightnings, earthquakes, and so on. So just to point out, verse nineteen, Revelation eleven nineteen. 
the temple of God in heaven. And we remember that when God told Moses to make the tabernacle, it was a copy of the heavenly things. So what Moses built here on earth, at the tabernacle, was a, in some way a copy uh, about the very throne room of God, the outer court, the inner court, and the most holy place. And uh, John is now seeing into the most holy place in heaven, where he sees the ark of his covenant in the temple of God. Right? So something very, uh, 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 that's the real, and what Moses made was a copy resembling that. Now, we come to chapter 12. Chapter 12 is still in the middle of the tribulation, seven years of tribulation, still there in the middle. How do we know that? As we read through chapter 12, once again, uh, the time fact, the timing, the day, days will be given to us. We will see that. And uh, he actually borrows language from uh, what, what we have already read. And also he borrows language from Daniel, a time, times, and half, half a time. So chapter 12 is still in the middle of the tribulation. But it's telling us that from that point on, the middle of the tribulation, Satan knows that his time is short. He has very little time left. And so he's going to go with all vengeance, with all he can, against Israel, but specifically against those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to go. That's just, you know, he has three and a half years left. That's it. So let's read chapter 12 and then try to understand that. Let's read, please, verses 1 through 6. Revelation 12, 1 through 6. Now a great in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars, then being with with child, she cried, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven, behold, a great fairy red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of, the, of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with the Lord of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. Amen. Amen. So, Chapter 12 is a chapter that actually uh, uh, confuses um, uh, many, many, many people and, and so on. So uh, it's good to pay a little close attention, try to understand this, right? So Revelation 12, verses 1 through 6, we are seeing three pictures. We are seeing the dragon, the woman, and a man child or a male child. So, who is the dragon? Who is the woman? Who is the male child? Or who you know? They, these are figures or these are pictures or you know uh, they they represent somebody. So the dragon we know very clearly it's the devil because um, in in verse nine, same chapter twelve, verse nine, it says, "So the great dragon." was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan. So the great dragon is the devil. It's given to us right here. It's explanations told us. So we don't have to think, oh, dragon means China. No. See, some people say, oh, this, they're, they're going outside the scripture to interpret it. No, just look right here. In verse 9, it says who the dragon is. Yes, we know in China, 
uh, they have the dragon festival and they have the they have the pictures of the dragon as part of the it's part of the culture in many many you know things that they do for whatever reason but we shouldn't take this dragon mentioned here in Revelation 12 and say, oh, that represents China. No, no, no. It's told, it's right here, Revelation 12, 9, that the dragon represents the devil, the sa Satan. Right? So this, this dragon, going back to verse 3, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads, ten horns, and seven diadems. Right? So this dragon, Seven heads, seven diadems, ten horns. So it's talking about the ten horns here, and we will see it explained in uh, coming up in chapter 13 and again coming up in chapter um, uh, uh, 17 and 18. These ten horns are representing the ten leaders, the ten toes that we read about in Daniel. Or we saw the beast with ten horns. So here we're seeing this dragon with ten horns, ten leaders who are being really supported and promoted by um, the enemy, we'll, by this dragon, by the devil. We will read more about that in, in the coming chapters. So this fiery red dragon has seven heads, seven diadems, uh, seven representing perfection, meaning he's, he has authority he has uh, diadem representing that uh, authority of being the god of this world uh, so on so we could infer that much you know from seven heads seven horn seven diadems ten horns ten leaders that are he's propping up but it tells us here what this dragon did who was this dragon his tail, this is, I'm looking at verse 3, Revelation 12, 3. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Right? So, interesting. Stars are used twice in, in this passage, chapter 12. There are 12 stars that we, re that we read in verse 1. But here we are reading in verse 4, one third of the stars. So the stars in 12.1 are different. The 12 stars in 12 verse 1 are different from the one third of stars drawn from heaven by this dragon. Right? So stars. Stars can represent angelic beings or stars can represent people. Like we said, those who turn many to righteousness will shine like the stars. Revelation 12.4, representing fallen angels who were drawn by the dragon out of heaven. So when Satan fell, this is the scripture that tells us that he took one third of heaven's angels with him. Now, why one third? Because there were three archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Lucifer. So we can say that each one of these three archangels were given a third, a third, a third of all the angelic hosts. And this archangel, Lucifer, succeeded in not only being himself deceived, but, but deceiving the one-third of the angels who were given to him, assigned to him. And so when he was dismissed from heaven by God, to put it politely, he took the one-third of the angels that were assigned to him with him. His tail drew a third of the stars. So that's how we know that there are a third, one-third of the angels fell with Lucifer, taken by him, thrown to the ground. Right? So, who is the woman? Revelation 12, 1. He says, A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with sun, the moon, and 12 stars. Now, what do we know about this woman? This woman gave birth 
to her child, who was a male child. What are the things given to us about the male child? The male child was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and he was caught up to God and his throne. So who could this male child be? It has to be Jesus. Because only Jesus is the one who is going to rule the nations with a rod of iron. Revelation chapter 19, he fulfills that. He comes out of heaven and he, you know, he destroys the kings of the earth with the word of his mouth and he rules the nations with a rod of iron. Revelation, let me give you the exact verse. Um, Revelation uh, 19 verse 15, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. Right? Revelation 19.15. So this male child is the one who rules the nations of the Lord Iron, Jesus. He was caught up to God and his throne. That's Jesus. He ascended to heaven. So the dragon is the devil. One third of the stars are the angels that fell with him. The male child clearly is Jesus. The question is, who is the woman? Well, People say, oh, the woman must be the church. No, 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 no. The church did not give birth to Jesus. The church came after Jesus ascended to heaven. But the, this woman gave birth to the male child. What do, you know, what do we know about the woman? The sun, the moon, and 12 stars. Who does that represent? In the Bible, you go back, Joseph had a dream. He said, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars, they bowed before him. Who was his father? Jacob. And uh, his mother. And the 12 stars. So this woman who is represented by the sun, the moon, the 12 stars, 12, 12 stars represents Israel. Israel gave birth to the male child, Jesus. He was born in the nation of Israel, right? So this passage now is very clear. Dragon, the devil, male child, Jesus. The woman is Israel. Very clear, no doubt. Now, we have to be very clear about this because I remember in recent times, people you know, have been speculating all kinds of things and I remember um, this was, I think, in 2019. Uh, there was a lot of that particular year. There was a lot of talk about, you know, blood moons. People were writing about books about the blood moon. Uh, the moon is going to become like blood because of some of the, you know, the, the eclipse and some other ways that things were aligned and all that. And I remember in the second half of 2019, uh, uh, you know, people said, oh, NASA has released uh, a, 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 an information that in the heavens, uh, the stars are all al aligning. Uh, they look like a woman giving birth to a male child. So that is a fulfillment of Revelation 12, verse 1, 1 and 2. That, uh, it, you know, he said, I saw a great sign in the heaven. There's a woman who's giving birth to a male child. Oh, that is a fulfillment of this. So, you know, something is going to happen. In fact, you know, somebody forwarded that email to me uh, saying, oh, you better inform the church. We are going to go be waiting, uh, waiting. The Lord Jesus is going to come on this particular day. They gave the date and all of that. So this was in 2019, you know, five years ago. Five years in come and gone, the alignment of stars happened, whatever. But Jesus, you know, it was not the coming of the Lord. So the point is this, right? We should don't take these scriptures and then kind of interpret them outside of their context. The context is very clear, biblical context. The sun, the moon, the 12 stars, that's the woman. Who is it? Nation of Israel. Male child, who is it? Jesus. Dragon, who is it? The devil. It's all within the Bible itself, right? You don't have to look at us, uh, astronomy or something. 
uh, or space information to interpret these things. It's right here. Okay. So basically what's happening is, what we are seeing is that the dragon, I'm looking now at verse 4, the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. So the, the devil wanted to kill Jesus. But that didn't happen. Right? She bore the Nehemiah child, who was going to rule all the nations, and he was caught up to the throne. Verse 6, what's going to happen? At that, time, at that point during the tribulation, the woman is going to flee into the wilderness. That means the people of Israel, they are going to be displaced. Many of them are going to flee into the wilderness where they're going to be protected by God for 1260 days. That is three and a half years. So what is verse 6 saying? Revelation 12 verse 6. It's a picture to us and we will understand it as we read the rest of chapter 12 why that's going to be so. But it's a picture of Israel being under great persecution. Where many of the people are going to run for their lives. They're going to go into a wilderness. And God is going to protect them. And this is going to happen for three and a half years. 1,260 days. So that's the second half of the tribulation. That's why the second half of the tribulation is referred to as the time of Jacob's trouble. That's based on Daniel 12 and I think also uh, Jeremiah um, Jeremiah 38 or something, I forget the exact reference. But it's a time of Jacob's trouble where uh, Israel is going to be attacked by the dragon. The devil is going to go full force against Israel. But God's going to divinely protect. So now people say, where is this wilderness? And we'll read more about it in the, in the uh, second half of this chapter. What, what people think, and th we don't know for sure, is that it's probably going to be a region along between Israel and Jordan because that is a, a, a vast expanse uh, like a wilderness and people are going to be scattered there or they're going to go there to try and hide and uh, you know be preserved by God. So that's what people think. We don't know uh, that God will divinely protect his pe the people of Israel there. Okay? So... Chapter 12. In chapter 12, in these verses now, we've got a little glimpse of the past. So while we are learning about what's going to happen in the future, the three and a half years, um, the second half of the tribulation, he's mentioning, okay, this dragon in times past drew a third of the stars of heaven with him and they were thrown to the earth, right? So talking about the future, he's giving us some insight to eternity passed. What happened when Lucifer was thrown out of heaven and he took a third of the stars with him. Now, at that time, now going back to the middle of the tribulation, at that time, something is going to happen. Let's read, continue reading, verse 7 uh, to 14. Sorry, uh, 7 to 12. 7 to 12. Revelation 12, 7 to 12. Somebody could read that for us, please. Verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, and serpent of old, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. 
Mm. Mm. So this passage that we just read, verses 7 to 12, is a very difficult passage. And a lot of people, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to say a lot of people, means Bible scholars or commentators, uh, they differ basically in the timing of this passage. Is this passage talking about what happened in the past? Or is this passage talking about what is going to happen during the tribulation? Right? So there are there are people who take different positions, but here's the way I feel you know I understand it. Because we are reading now about the, the middle of the tribulation, and because of the context here that the devil knows his time is short which is just 1,260 days, three and a half years, which we will also see. My uh, interpretation or my understanding of this Revelation 12, 7 to 12 is that it is a description of what is going to happen at that time in the tribulation. That at that time, Satan is going to make one final attempt, because he knows his time is short, he is going to make one final attempt to break through into heaven. But there's going to be war in the heavens, and Michael and his angels are going to keep Satan and his demons out. So no place here. And they're going to be cast back to the earth, along with his angels. So that's what it says here, who deceives the whole world. He was cast out to the earth with his angels who were cast with him, uh, who, who were cast out with him. So that means it's going to happen at that point, in the middle of the tribulation, Satan is going to make one final attempt to try to get into heaven, penetrate, you know, make some, create, you know, do whatever he wants. But Michael and angels are standing guard. They're saying, there are no place here in the, in the third heavens. And you're f he's cast out to the earth along with his angels. And the accused of the brethren, he's cast to the earth, and he is coming down, having great anger because he knows his time is short. I mean, he's like, hey, he's like in panic mode. I know I have only 1,260 days. I have to try to do something. My end is coming. Tries to break into heaven, no way. Thrown back to the earth. But on the earth, there are people who overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. That means here on earth, in the middle of the tribulation, at that time, there are people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they say, we don't care if we have to die. Right? And they overcome the devil. The devil has come with great anger. He is the accuser of the brethren. They say they overcome the devil. With the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, they are not afraid to die for Jesus Christ. So in that time, the second half of the tribulation, there will be believers who, be, who, are, who you know, stand believing in the blood of Jesus Christ and they live overcoming, they overcome the devil at that time. So that's the, that, that passage, Revelation 12, 7 to 12. It is a description of what is going to happen in the tribulation. Basically, Satan tries to make one final attempt to go up into heaven. Michael and the archangels push him out, push him back to the earth with his demons. He knows his time is short, and he is trying to you know, create lots of problems. And what does he do specifically during that time? Revelation 12, 13 to 17, please. Revelation 12, 13 to 17. Somebody can read that. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of the 
of a great end of a great ego that she might fly into the wilderness in her place where she is nourished she is nourished for a time and a time and a half a time from the presence of the serpent so the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after a woman after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood but the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the woman had spewed out of his mouth and the dragon was enraged 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 with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who kept the who keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus christ amen amen so what does the dragon do he's been cast to the earth Michael and, his, and the, uh, Michael and all the angels say, hey, no, you cannot enter heaven, no place here. Push back. And he comes to the earth. And what does he do? Verse 13. He attacks the woman who gave birth to the male child. Who's the woman? Israel. That means he's going after the Jewish people. Now, the Jewish people have been suffering a lot from a long time. Even today, battles happening, people... You know that it's going on. Not many people like them. So on. But in the middle of the tribulation, it's going to get very intense because the dragon is going to go after Israel, the woman, because she gave birth to the male child. She gave birth to Jesus. Jesus came from this nation. He's going to go after her. But it says, verse fourteen. The woman will be given two wings like an eagle. She will fly into the wilderness and she will be nourished there for a time, times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So what is this? So somebody say, some people will say, oh, um, uh, maybe it is that the Jewish people will be evacuated by aeroplanes. The wings of a year they'll be, and they'll be taken away somewhere else. No, right? So let's not go there. Basically, wings of an eagle means supernaturally there is speed, strength, and safety. Why? Because the eagle flies high up in the sky. Right? It's very powerful. So God is Himself is going to supernaturally. In some way, protect his people by giving them speed, strength, and safety. So, as symbolized by the eagle. And he's going to preserve them in the wilderness. So, that's where people say, okay, where is this wilderness where they can be safe? And that's where, again, this is only a guess. We don't know for sure. But what people think is just as between the border of Israel and Jordan on the east is this great land, wilderness land. So it could be that a lot of these people are displaced. They move there very quickly with speed, strength, and safety. They're preserved there. Plus something else happens. The dragon or the serpent spews uh, it says, a flood out of his mouth, verse 15, in order to try to destroy the woman. So what is the flood? Water. First of all, you know, this is a picture, of course. It's figurative, right? A snake doesn't put water, but it's figurative. Now, again, we have to use biblical interpretation. Waters, uh, as we will see in chapter 17, and verse 15, the waters represent peoples, nations, and multitudes and tongues. Revelation 17, 15. So the way we can interpret this figure, this picture that we are seeing here in verse 15 is, the serpent is going to cause people, what represented by the flood, by water, 
to come against this woman. So how is the devil going to attack Israel? It's going to be by mobilizing people to come against this nation. Right? It's not like the devil himself is going to physically come here, but it's going to be like people are going to come with great force, trying to, you know, which has happened in the past, but it's going to happen in a very big way in time to come, that time of tribulation. People are going to come, nations are going to come against Israel, but God is going to preserve them for a time, times, and half a time. This is language borrowed from Daniel. We read it twice, at least in Daniel. Time, one year. Times, two year, two years. Half a time, half a year. Three and a half years. Right? 1,260 days. 42 months. All matches. So for this three and a half years, the second half of the tribulation, the devil is going to mobilize people to attack Israel. Israel is going to move with speed, strength, and safety into this area of the wilderness and God is going to supernaturally intervene that when these masses of armies of people coming against Israel there's he's going to cause the earth to swallow them up you know you can imagine maybe a big earthquake or something uh, that that happens that uh, protects Israel as uh, the people and verse 17, so when all this is going on, it says that dragon is enraged with the woman. The devil is even more angry with Israel. Of course, he's going to work through the Antichrist, the false prophet, which we will see in chapter 13. And he's going to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. That means there are going to be Jewish people who are going to believe in Jesus Christ. And the devil, working through the Antichrist and the false prophets, is going to specially target those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and have the testimony of Jesus. Right? So, on the one hand, we see that uh, there will be people who will overcome the devil with the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. They will stand firm, they will not love their lives even to the point of death. But there will also be this big, great persecution instigated by the dragon, by the devil himself, against everybody who are following Jesus at that time during the tribulation. Okay? So, chapter 12 appears to be a very complicated chapter, but actually it's a very straightforward, simple chapter. Right? We don't need to complicate it. You know, you understand the figures. It's figurative language, that's why it seems complicated. But you understand the figures. The sun, the moon, the 12 stars represents the woman, that's the nation of Israel. The man-child, he was to rule the nations with the rod of iron. He's the one who was caught up to the throne of God. He's the one whom the devil tried to destroy. Well, that's Jesus Christ. The dragon, that's the devil. He drew a third of the stars with him. He took one third of the angels because there were three archangels. Each was given a charge of the third of the angels of God. And when Lucifer fell, he took a third. And then in the middle of the tribulation, he's going to make a final attempt to go against God. But Michael and the archangel, Michael the archangel and other angels will say, hey, you can no place in heaven for you. Push him down to the earth. And he's going to come with great vengeance, knows that his time is short. He only has about 1,260 days or less left. And he knows he has only a time, times and half a time, that is three and a half years. So he's going to do his best to go against Israel by mobilizing people, languages, peoples, multitudes, tribes and tongues, try to get them to go against Israel. But the people of Israel are going to move with speed, strength and safety, represented by the great eagle, they're going to go into the wilderness. God has a place for them, and He prepared, preserve them, protect them. And God Himself will intervene by causing some sort of an earthquake type of thing that will swallow up or destroy the peoples who have been instigated by the devil to attack Israel. 
And the devil is then going to focus his attention on everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ or persecute them. And that's going to happen through the Antichrist and the false prophet. Which brings us to chapter 13. Any questions from chapter 12? Okay. Oh, yes. There we go. go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Um, my question is regarding the um, Satan and a third of the angels. Um, um, is, is, is it something that has already happened? Or, uh, mm. for example, in verse... Nine, yeah, he was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. So, mm. is it a past event or is it something that's about to happen? Mm. Okay, so verse 4, Re Revelation 12, verse 4 that's a past event. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth. So, verse 4, Revelation 12, verse 4, His tail drew a third of the stars of the heaven and threw them to the earth. So, remember, Jesus said in Luke 10 and verse 17, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Right? So, Satan was thrown out of heaven. And uh, that's a past event. So, Revelation 12, 4 is sometime in the eternity past. And when he was thrown out of heaven, when he fell like lightning out of heaven, he took one third of the angels, a third of the stars with him. So that's a past event. Revelation 12, 9 is a future event. That means in the middle of the tribulation, The dragon, the devil, will know his time is short. He's going, he's now, remember, now the devil's operating on the earth with these angels, with these fallen angels, demonic power spirits. Some of them are actually held in prison, in bondage, in hell. But there are other spirits operating now with the devil. And in the future, in the middle of the tribulation, he is going, so that is Revelation 12, 7 onwards. He's going to make one final attempt to try to gain entrance into heaven. But there is no way, no place for him there. Michael, the archangel, stands there along with the other angels of God and says, no place here. And he will be cast to the earth, that is verse 9, and his angels were cast out with him. That means... There's, a, there's an attempt to go, there's no entrance, they are forced back to the earth, where they currently operate. So that's going to happen in the future. That war, described in verses 7 to 9, is a future war. Okay? All right. Okay. So, we're going to stop here for today. I'll just give a little brief on what we, what's going to happen. Chapter 13 is where we're going to start reading about what the Antichrist is going to do, starting in the middle of the tribulation. So, we said from Revelation 6 verse 1, the first seal, when this first seal was opened, there was this man riding on a white horse and he went out to conquer. And we said that man was the Antichrist, not the real Christ. The real Christ comes, Revelation 19. But Revelation 6, 1, that man is the Antichrist. So he started his work there at the beginning of the seven years. 
He comes as a man of peace. We saw from Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, that he makes a covenant of peace for seven years, for one week. So he started out as a man of peace by establishing a peace treaty. But in the middle of the tribulation, Revelation chapter 13, this man is going to change. He's going to be, become a different kind of a person. And we will also see that he's going to be accompanied by another man who's called a false prophet. And they're going to begin their act, they're going to you know, do their activity uh, from the middle of the tribulation that's described for us in Revelation chapter 13. So we will start there next week. And uh, uh, we might be able to uh, make much progress. Yeah, I think we will be able to make much progress. So maybe one or two more uh, days and we'll finish Revelation. Okay? I hope all, all of you are with me. Uh, feel free to ask any questions anytime. Right. It's a question, Rosalind. Where is Satan now? His evil spirits are at work now, I know. But where is Satan now? Does he have any location? According to verse 9, where is, where is Sa Satan cast out? So the Bible and the Lord Jesus uh, refer to Satan as the prince of this world, the ruler of this world. The Apostle Paul refers to him as the god of this world. And uh, he is operating on the earth. Now, he is not omnipresent, which means he is, can only be in one place at one time. But like Ephesians 6, 12 says, he's got an organized structure of demons, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spirits of wickedness, and Satan is their chief, their archangel. So... Where is Satan? He's going around the earth, all over the place. He's deputized a lot of his work to his hierarchy of evil spirits, but he's moving from place to place, and he is trying to set up dominions or places of demonic power. So if you remember in chapter 2, when the Lord is speaking to the, one of the churches, he says, I know where you are, where Satan's throne is. That means in that city, Satan has established a stronghold, a demonic influence in that city. So like that, he's trying to gain, you know, influence, increase his influence in different places, moving around the earth. So in Job, the Lord asks, so Satan, where have you been? He says, I've been busy going around the earth, you know, doing his work. So Satan is moving around physically, I mean, in the spiritual realm, of course, unseen realm. And uh, he has his whole hierarchy of demons. Um, yeah, that's what we can say. So he is not localized. That means he's not necessarily sitting somewhere. He's probably moving around busy place to place. And... Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Somebody could close in prayer and then we will dismiss, please. Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that we learned today, God. We thank you uh, for all the revelations uh, that you have given us. We thank you for your word that uh, equips us, teaches us, and uh, builds us up in our hope, in our faith in you, Jesus. And God, thank you for all my classmates over here. We thank you for Pastor Ashes who taught us. Give us all a good health and uh, Above all, Jesus, help us to preach the gospel boldly. Let everything that we learn, Lord, motivate us uh, to reach out to the lost people so that God, heaven would rejoice and uh, 
we would also rejoice in the joy of salvation every single day. Give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. See you again next week. God bless.